Hello, friends of the internet. My name is uh, Austin Belzer from Austin B Media. I have the filmmakers behind Murder in Bighorn, a docu-series about uh, murdered and missing indigenous women that's going to be on Showtime, I believe, next month. Um, I think February 5th is the first episode, and then it goes weekly from there. Um, but right now, it's playing at the uh, Egyptian Theater at Sundance. Uh, last night um or afternoon um but i want to thank you both for taking the time out of your i'm assuming busy schedule um to talk with me thanks for having us yeah no problem um i have a lot of questions uh and i can't get to all of them uh but so you you guys are working together on this uh, docu series, Mur uh, Murder and Bighorn. In case I didn't already say that, um, so what brought you two together? So Showtime approached Matthew uh, with the seed of an idea um, regarding MMIW, and um, once he looked into it. <laughs> He knew he, um, Matt, sorry, I'm talking for you, Matthew, but I love when you talk he, for me. I love it. Go. <laughs> he brought me on, um, because the show needed, uh, a native woman, um, to, to help, to help move, move the, the story in the series along. Yeah. I know, you know, I, I've been making docs and doc series for almost 25 years now. Um, I knew nothing about MMIW. But I did have, I have confidence in my ability to, to help make a large scale commercial documentary series. And with Rizal's, um lived knowledge and filmmaking talents, um, in my experience, uh, we thought it was, this would be a good, a good combination um, of talents. And it, it proved to be, it was a, it's a, been a beautiful collaboration. Yeah. And I think, um, well, um, you talk about how it's kind of, um, you didn't know about MMIW, um, before this, and I only had heard of it back, uh, Tyler Sheridan, he did a movie called Wind River back, was it five, six years now? Yeah, five, six years ago, uh, now, and that was my first exposure, but, um, so this is really kind of an new thing for the public eye and you talk about it a little bit uh in the docu series um about media representation um really quick uh if you want to go into it what is your opinion on the media's representation of mmiw so so far we've had a large number of fiction narratives and television shows covering this issue of MMIW, but not through um, a nonfiction uh, vessel. And so what you get when you fictionize MMIW is you get a little bit of sensationalism. Um, you get the embellishment of the issue. And more often times than not, there is there's an answer there's an ending to these stories. Um, the sad reality is when you're talking about uh, missing and murdered indigenous women, uh, there is no ending for these families. There is no perpetrator that's caught. There, sometimes there's no body that's found. Sometimes our relatives are just missing. And, and it's, 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 uh, it can be upsetting. Um, for families and, and triggering for families to see that narrative out there that doesn't mirror their own experience. And most of these cases um, were handled negligently in the very beginning by law enforcement. And because of that, um, a lot of times it's, it's going to be very difficult for there to to be any answers about most of these cases and that's frustrating that's really sad but our series is the the first time that a large network um, has been bold enough to platform this issue and given 
um, and, and, and giving a, a, a space for these families to speak their truth about this issue. Yeah, and um, uh, and I love Showtime stuff. I I've actually been meaning to watch uh, Boys in Blue. I saw that premiered about a uh, month ago or earlier this week. But um, so another thing I want to ask about um, is you constantly bring up in the docu series um, that there's a lot of silence from law enforcement when. Um, somebody reports it. Uh, I think there was one case where somebody went three weeks, reported it, um, and then there was just nothing. Somebody just, I believe it was uh, Jeremy Middlestead. Um, yeah, I believe it was that, that detective uh, just jotted it down on his iPad in his pocket or something like that. So I'd, I'd love to broach the topic of um, silence in law enforcement. I mean, result. Why don't you talk about historically what the uh, what the background is as far as the the relationship between law enforcement and the native community, and then maybe I'll talk about specifics. Mm -hmm. So, since contact with with settlers, um, when Europeans first came to this land, um, they wanted it. And how do you get something that's not yours? You take it. And in order to do that, they wanted to decimate our people. Uh, when our warriors fought back to protect not only the lands, but our people, um, there was this conflict going on, the Indian conflict, the Indian problem. And when you can't get past that, you have to uh, shift your strategy. So they started targeting our women because our women are the backbones of our nation. They are the knowledge keepers, they are life givers. And when you go after vulnerable, when you go after the life givers, that's how you start to kill off a people. So that's what uh, colonization has 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 done, and con and we feel the direct impact of colonization to this day through issues like MMIW. And when you when you when you target, you know, the most vulnerable parts of community, which are women. Um, with the system that's in place, that is the United States government, that system was never meant to protect us. So when you target a people and you target the women and the system in place wasn't made to protect you, then you get this issue that's rampant, widespread, and, and seemingly is not, oh, I should say this, it's not a simple, issue to fix. It's ingrained and complex in the history of the United States of America. So there's going to be no simple fix for this. So going back to what you're talking about, um, the silence of law enforcement, it's an extension of history. It's an extension of what has always been done to us. A system that wasn't made to protect us continues um, to, to not do so. And, and, and that's why uh, seemingly law enforcement is silent. Um, yeah, I mean, that's I mean we spend, we spend um, months and months trying to gain access to the Bighorn County Sheriff's Office. Um, and it was a complete stone wall. Uh, they refused to participate. The FBI refused to participate. The BIA refused to participate. Um, Frustrating for us, the silence, but uh, infinitely more so and more disheartening for the families that are trying to get answers um, as far as the investigations into their uh, daughters, either missing cases or um, potential murder cases. Um, so, uh, you know, there's the there's tons of jurisdictional issues in the area as far as, you know, who is charged with policing which areas and Historically, you know, policing on reservations is a federal, falls under the sort of federal jurisdiction, which is the BIA, um, which is, you know, on its base level, quite un, under-resourced. Um, you know, there are very few uh, officers to patrol a very large area. 
Um, so right there, it's it's the you know lack of resources is a, is a part of it. In places like Bighorn County, I think racism is a is a large part of it, um, and it's sort of historically in that area been a real issue between a sheriff's department and the local native community. Yeah, when you have a preconceived notion of a group of people and a bias against them, um, you're not gonna do all that you can to want to help. And that plays a major part into our our people's access to um, to to safety and in protection. Yeah, and what I also found interesting, um, I I don't know if this is the case with all the cases, but they automatically go to intoxication um at the time of their disappearance um in fact with the, i think the five cases you bring up the medical examiner um that you interviewed um just Im immediately goes to intoxication which i found interesting um but um do, real quick question um did you ever hear from Jeremy? Um, I know you talked about stonewalling um, from the sheriff's office, but I wanted to hear if you heard from Jeremy at all. From Jeremy, Jeremy Milson. Yeah. Um, we did not. We've re we reached out to him numerous times. We sent him um, letters, lists of allegations, um, gave him every possible opportunity to participate or at least make a statement, and he um, declined to comment. Actually, I won't even say he declined to comment. He just did not respond, which we then took as a uh, as his um, declining to comment. And that goes for the that goes for the sheriff's office too. Um, yeah. We, you know, not only did we reach out to them for uh, well over a year, but you know, at the very end of uh, of our edit, um, you know, people make a lot of allegations uh, against the sheriff's department and we wanted to give them a chance to answer those. And so we sent them uh, a, a long list of allegations in the mail, um, which they refused to answer. And, it's, you know, it, it, that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, before we go, I just wanted to ask, um, after people watch this docu series, what is your hope uh, um, for people uh, learning about this for the first time? Maybe um, should they connect with the NIWRC? What are some resources? Yeah, so you know, our hope for the series with audiences specifically who who may have never heard of this was just to um, to connect to connect with these stories because they are human stories and that's how we work that's what we wanted to that's how we wanted to present them to people um we hope that uh there's some there there's some education built into it even though i've always been about not educating people about natives because it's so much work um with something like this you really have to contextualize everything that's going on in a way that that makes sense. And so our hope is that people can walk away from this series, you know, feeling as angry and and sad as some of these families do, but also uh feeling like, you know, they they could do something. They could um become an ally. They can, you know, support legislation and these rallies and in in causes and demonstrations when if it's happening in their town and or if it's on their um docket of of bills to be passed and and so we really want to encourage people to go to the NIWRC website to for more information because these things matter and and also with all of the injustices against our people um, and, and the issues arising in our communities and the lack of protect, protection and, and law enforcement negligence, um, because 
we wanted to present this to the world because if it's happening in our communities, who's to say that it can't happen in yours? You know, um, that's the ultimate reality is that it's happening to us. It could happen to you too. Let's figure out how to do something about it so history doesn't repeat itself. And MMIW is not a new issue. It's always been there. And it now is the time to make this more urgent than ever because it's gone on far too long and we need to do something about it. Yeah, I think that's a, a beautiful stopping point because I think, you know, it's been 200 years. I think it's time to raise awareness. And part of that, I think, is, you know, if you're if you uh, can afford the single ticket for uh, Sundance, uh, it's twenty dollars. You can watch it from, I believe, na all three episodes from now uh, or I'm sorry, next uh, from January 24th through the 30th virtually. And then they're doing a uh, daily screening, I believe. Uh, in person that in Park City at various theaters across Utah. Um, but uh, Rizelle, Matthew, I want to thank you so much for coming on, taking uh, time out of your busy schedule to talk with me. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm.